every single Friday, uh, courtesy of our friends at the Dairy Queens of Northwest Edmonton and Sherwood Park. We're talking Palisades, Nemeo, Newcastle, Westmount, Baseline Road. A chance for you to blow off a little steam. A chance for you to bring us your hot takes. It's something that we call the flamethrower. And this is a chance, real emails, to talk at RyanJesperson.com for you to grab hold of the attention of this audience. We want to hear your hot takes. We want you to bring the fire and uh that's exactly what kyle has done here who says jespo i've been holding on to this for a while now but your recent how woke are canadians episode pushed me over the top kyle says in my humble opinion liberals and leftists have an abusive relationship with facts and the truth they live their truth which never is actual truth i find the easiest way to tell if a liberal is lying is to see if they're talking and if they are, they're probably more than likely lying to you. I know that Kyle's just poking the hive, poking the hive. He said it might be the prime minister lying about trying to get more people's homes, yet scraping the first-time home buyer incentive, giving money to governments earmarked for housing, but no structure to enforce that it actually goes toward home building. It could be trying to grow more solar on people's homes with the Greener Homes Grant, yet putting a huge tariff on the importing of solar components and panels. It could be... BC Premier David Eby or guests on Real Talk who say that safer supply and supervised consumption sites are the best way to handle the opioid crisis, yet we know that safe supply drugs from BC are being trafficked into Alberta communities and making their way into high schools. Uh, Kind of a weird association, Kyle, but I digress. He says, instead of feeding someone's addiction, we need to lift them up and help them recover, even if it's involuntary. Even if it's involuntary. He says, we do this for people with mental health issues, except for those with gender dysphoria for some reason. We promote that. Oh, boy. Kyle says the political lies we see that affect so many people, the lives, the half-truths we see have caused people who are not well off in the head to do things like light themselves on fire for Palestine too soon. Says it causes people to burn down churches and synagogues because of suspected genocides. Uh Uh-oh. There are real-world genocides and atrocities happening right now. Like in Armenia, says Kyle, Canada's economy is is in a stagflationary period. This is the year, 2024, the election around the world. So much is happening, but instead we're stuck with liberal lies. He says, I hope Real Talk will continue to cut through the crap on the political and social landscapes we see today. That from Kyle. Thanks, man. This one from Randy with an I out of Victoria. It says, a former Albertan. I used to live in Calgary, in fact. I'm very excited that Ned Nudgee's running for the NDP. He's not perfect, like all of us. But he was a good mayor, and he'd make a great premier. And uh, everything he said about Daniel Smith on Real Talk seemed true to me. Uh, but one of your listeners said that BC's health care was worse off than Alberta's. Uh, totally wrong. And changes to better it are going on continually. Unlike Alberta, our family doctors registered in BC up by 700 in the last year alone. That's from Randy with an I. Now about this one from Grumpy Canadian who says, uh, Nahed Nenshi on your show, Jespo, brought up the Dyna Life fiasco again and I lose my mind every time I hear it. My entire adult life, 22 years now, I've been heavily reliant on the healthcare system. I I was diagnosed with end-stage kidney failure, a transplant in 2004, another transplant just last September. Oof. Uh, says, with that, I've had to rely on Dynalife lab services for monthly or, or even more frequent blood work. And I'm sick and tired of hearing about how this failure to privatize lab services last year, you know, when life has been a disaster for like 20 years. Uh, it's only when Dynalife took over services in Calgary, home of our incompetent conservative leadership, that it finally got some attention and action from the government. That from Grumpy Canadian, who wishes everybody a very happy Friday. And this one from Aaron, who's putting out a call to those of you across the country. He says, may I please ask, s'il vous plaît, what's wrong with learning French? I hear people bitching about it all the time, but but the first people other than the indigenous people that were living in what we now call Alberta, guess what? Francophone. Our first school, Francophone. My mom was basically beaten for speaking French when growing up. You know, the, the democratically elected, you know, deciding that English was the way to go and the only way to go. I remember arguing with people about how folks' brains work differently, so learning languages was a problem for Anglophones. She says, but the Quebecois can somehow learn two or even three or sometimes four languages. Not a problem. What is it, says Aaron? And I love this, the little dag dig to really light a fire under all of us. She says, somehow Quebec, I don't know, does Quebec have better water? I don't know, their brains are better fed? I don't know, it's allowing them to learn languages more fluently, more easily than the rest of you across the country. We are a bilingual country. And to my fellow Canadians, says Aaron, it's time to learn French. I like that one. You can send us your flamethrower anytime to talk at ryanjesperson.com. These are emails from Real Talkers sounding off courtesy of our friends at the DQs of Northwest Edmonton and Sherwood Park. 
Thanks for being a big part of the shows this week. Make sure you share those episodes that resonated with you. Nahed Nenshi on Tuesday. Danielle Smith yesterday. We're back at it next week. Have a great weekend, everybody.